Hello everyone, welcome to ME1201 Computated Design. This is a 3D modeling activity using Autodesk Inventor 2020 for revision 2, question 2. Let's begin. So this is the question for your inventor. As usual, we will simplify by removing all the holes here, 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 the ribs. Let's remove them first. Uh, the fillets. R16, let's ignore them first. And all the other secondary features. The ribs here, this small feature, the, the, the backbone or the, the spine here. And what is left is actually just this semicircle and a small rectangle here. Okay, So the semicircle has a dimension of 80 mm. Okay, A diameter of 80 mm. Then followed by this rectangle of 28 by 80. Right? So let's head over to our inventor. This is your final product of the revision question 2. Right? So what we are trying to do is actually just this rear piece here. So go to files, create new. And a matrix folder, double click on standard mm.ipt. Inside your model browser, click the plus sign, left click on the yz plane, press the shift key, and click on the xy plane. Let go of your shift key, right mouse click, and click on visibility. Okay, so I will start with this yz plane, create a new sketch. I will draw a rectangle and a circle. Next, I will do some trimming first. So trim here, here, and here. And lastly, I will have to constrain this curvature to this line. So a curve and a line, you can constrain it using tangent constraint. So here and here. Right mouse click, press OK. We will now add the dimensions. As we know, this is actually 80. And the height for this fella is actually 28. Right mouse click, click press OK. Okay, our sketch is still green, so just select anywhere and try to move it around. So let's move the midpoint of this line to the center point of the circle. So doing that, we need to have coincident constraint from the midpoint, okay, represented by this green dot, and to the center point of the circle. So if you cannot select it, just hover on top of it, right mouse click, select others, and click on the drop down menu, find point. And by doing so, everything has been fully constrained finish your sketch and we will extrude this by 16 mm use the extrude tool select the two profiles and change it to 16. let's do a flip okay why do I have to do that? Is because by doing the extrusion on the other side, okay, the opposite side, I can actually make use of the default plane to do the measurement for this 36. But this is just uh, optional. So press OK. Next, I will do the, the small hub here. Okay, diameter 44. Again, as you can see, I can begin from this flat panel here, okay, just where the rectangular ends, and I can draw that circle of diameter 44, and I can extrude asymmetry both ways. Means I can go up by 8 mm and go down by 24 mm. All right. So starting from this surface, create sketch. I will project 
geometry for this axis here. And I will draw a circle. Make sure when you are going up, the projected edge gets highlighted so that we know that we are using that as a reference. Let this, let's dimension them first here, 44. Now, the distance between this center to this fella here is a little bit tricky because we have 36 and 56. All right, not a big issue. So let's just add a point somewhere here, dimension it accordingly, here to here, which is 36. And from here to the center here, it's 56. And by doing so, we have our diameter 44 fully constrained. You can finish your sketch, click on extrude tool, select the sketch, and this time change it to asymmetric direction with the top direction as okay take note any any time that the box is selected the arrow gets uh, yeah highlighted or it turns into a golden color so for this case we want the top here going upwards by 8 mm while the bottom here we are going by 24 mm Press OK. Next, I will do the spline here. The spine here, not spline. Okay, the backbone. And this backbone, it has a horizontal line. And then, upon some length, it goes tangent to the diameter 44. Okay, and these sloping lines are actually 60 degrees to one another. So, from the look of it, we will assume that this sloping line to the horizontal axis is actually 60 divided by 2, 30. So they are symmetric about this center line. Again, I will reuse back this face as your uh, create new sketch plane. I will now draw a horizontal line from here, somewhere here. Let's just estimate. And when we come about the diameter 44, make sure there's a tangent constraint symbol that appears. Let's repeat again to the bottom here. From here, make sure the tracing line has appeared. And yeah, repeat again. Make sure that you have the tangent symbol appearing. Okay, if it doesn't appear, it's okay. Just make sure it ends to the circle. Right click, press OK, and Remember to apply the tangent constraint. Right click, press OK. Now, if you see here, the length from here and here isn't moving together. However, we know that the length must be the same from the drawing itself. So, we can use the equal constraint to make sure that these two lines have the same length. And lastly, let's dimension here to here. Oops, I got it incorrect. Right click, let's delete this. Dimension again from here till here, it's 60. And voila, we have done it. Finish your sketch and let's extrude it downwards by 16 mm. All right. Click on the extrude tool, select the profile. Okay, you notice that my profile cannot be selected. Okay, so what you need to do is actually just by adding a little bit of lines here and there, and we test it out again to see whether we can perform the extrusion or not. So press cancel and double click on the sketch number three inside your model browser. Let's project geometry for this edge. Finish your sketch and try again. Okay, this time we can only select the edge here. So what's missing is actually we need to draw a circle. Okay, a, a little bit of arc here so that we can extrude it outwards. So press cancel. Go back into our sketch number three by double clicking on it. And this time use center point arc Starting from here, we will go all the way 
to this starting point and then move inwards until the other end let's press f7 to check okay it looks complete right mouse click no sorry we will just highlight this bigger circle and right click to make it into construction line finish your sketch let's try extrude again oh it doesn't work still what happened okay let's try to solve it press cancel go inside your sketch number three let's just draw one line across here finish your sketch and extrude it oh Ah, okay. So if you see here, what you can do is always go by every point and try to drag them around. As you can see, this edge here is the one that is causing the issue. So since we can drag it out, we just need to trim it now. So go into sketch number three again by double clicking on it and select trim. And this time, yeah, extrude to shoot work. Okay, however, our sketch here hmm, doesn't touch the opposite side. So let's constrain it first. Extrude again. Yes, it works. And it has a thickness of 16 here. Next, let's create this small step here of 32. And it has the same depth or the same amount of extrusion to this bottom surface. So there's no thickness given here, but no worries. We can start from this face and we can just extrude it to this surface. So starting from this face, create a new sketch. Select the two point rectangle from here. Make sure there's a green dot and then we move to the opposite side and dimension it by 32 finish your sketch extrude and this time we will select to a surface here and press ok next let's perform this small hub here of diameter 32 Okay, it shares the same center of this uh, threaded hole or tap hole. All right, and it's also symmetry about the center here. Okay, it has a length of 38. So I will begin from this XY plane, draw a circle. All right, this circle must be aligned together with this bigger uh, up here or the bigger radius okay if you see the center of this diameter 32 is aligned to this center here of this r40 or diameter 80 i would call it okay so to make the two points align together we will use the horizontal constraint from here make sure that the trailing line is correct is shown as horizontal so we can continue left click on this point and left click again once more to the other point and this time we just need to dimension them from here okay we can select it is okay right mouse click select others and click on point and we can enter there 36 diameter 32 and we can extrude it to symmetry about 38 mm press ok now 
here at the back here okay behind this piece okay, you can see there's a hidden feature here this hidden feature from the plan view is just a common rectangle now from the front view is also a common rectangle however from the end view it shows that it has a semicircle at the top and all the way downwards here okay this is quite simple you can just start your sketch from this face okay and instead of drawing a rectangle and a circle yourself expand this rectangle tool and we will use the slot center to center slot from center of here to the center of the bottom here and we will dimension it with a thickness of 28 and finish our sketch we will extrude cut by 8mm so change the boolean to cut and change the distance to 8mm and press ok now i will always like to leave the rib to the last because it's the yeah it's the feature that will cause a lot of issues if you you don't know what you're doing okay but it's okay for this question itself take a look at the rib here uh, if you're not careful and you apply this rib uh, most of you will not be able to create the rib at all okay the reason is because of this feature here let me zoom in and we've noticed carefully the rib is actually touching about a flat feature on this diameter 44 circle okay so even before we can create the rib or sketch out the rib uh, shape we will need to create a cutout of 12 mm okay means we will draw a line dimension that line of 12 mm and extrude cut by a certain value by a certain amount okay the amount is not so critical here let me zoom out a little bit let's go into our inventor from this surface create a sketch we will go to line like i mentioned we will draw one vertical line and dimension it to to be 12 mm next finish your sketch extrude and for this time because we have a feature here let's extrude it to this face and press ok now having this flat will then as allow us to create the necessary rib okay so on as we move on let's create the rib now click on the xy plane create sketch go to line and then let's wiggle it away so that the circle get projected from here to here from here to where is it okay since it's not showing it's okay we just click it outside first now we will constrain the point here to the circle and then we will apply another tangent constraint from here to here this line is sloping but from the drawing is actually horizontal so let's apply a horizontal constraint to the line itself now press f7 uh, as usual when we are doing uh, a rib or when we're creating a rib any other features here must be changed into construction line however when doing so you see the line continuation has been broken up okay because this full circle has been broken up a uh, broken uh, broke these two lines uh, continuity so go to arc we will just draw and complete that circle for us okay right click press ok as you can see we have one line sloping line we have the curvature here and we have a horizontal line here this will form for us a continuous open profile for our rib feature finish your sketch click on rib tool select your feature now select the second option parallel to sketch plane and let's swap over the direction 
and for the thickness apply 12 again okay the same length as your line here and press ok remember if it's a rib please use the rib function to create them now let's create most of the holes here so there's one diameter 18 hole here and a counter ball hole here of diameter 32 this larger hole with a depth of 6 and a smaller hole of diameter 24 that is true all so let's create these two uh, simpler hole first let's go to hole click on the starting phase and then we will click a cylindrical reference to centralize our hole change the diameter to 18 and with a termination of true all let's check the type simple hole and no seating and press ok let's continue further hole stem starting surface and then cylindrical reference here but this time a simple hole with a counter ball seating an opening hole of diameter 32 with a depth of 6 mm and a opening smaller hole of 24 press ok next let's create these five holes of diameter 10 so the method here we will create one hole of diameter 10 using the hole tool and afterwards we will use the circular pattern to create these five uh, these other four holes All right so let's begin from this phase we will create a sketch we will draw a circle of diameter 60 project geometry of this vertical line and we will insert a center point about that intersection once done finish your sketch click on the hole tool okay automatically inventor will select your the center point that you have created this time it's a simple hole with no seating, a true all with a diameter 10. Press OK. Let's check. Looks good. Use the circular pattern. Select your feature. Under the rotation axis, select it and click on this diameter 80 as your reference. Okay, your placement have five instances with an angle of 180 take note when we have applied so okay uh, yeah you, we are missing actually two more holes on the opposite side so that that's where we can either click on this rotation axis and take a look oh this isn't helping it's just swapping the direction so let's swap it back but we can actually click on this mid plane to ensure that we have equal amount of holes created or equal amount of features created on both sides Next, press OK. Yep. Here, we will create the M12 hole. Okay. Uh, center to center, it's 58. Okay. And it has a 36 mm from this flat surface. So, I will create from this surface as your starting point. Create two points, one and two let's dimension them as 58 now our lines are actually moving diagonally so we would not want that we want them to be aligned vertically so click on the vertical constraint click on the two points and now your lines or your points will not be rotated we need these two points equal distance about this center line so click on dimensions select the center line here and select one of the points either one okay this time we will just click 58 divide by 2 and press the tick key so automatically inventor will calculate what's the center distance what's the distance uh, between themselves now here to here it's 36 and 
in the sketch. Uh, the center point looks fine. Finish your sketch and click on hole. Okay, for now, this is a threaded hole or in Inventor is known as a tap hole. With no seating, let's change the track type to ISO matrix with a sizing of 12 mm. Okay, since there's no pitch uh, being identified inside the drawing, we will just assume it's as a coarse trap. Right, the full depth since this hole has a termination of true all. Finish your hole creation. Now we are almost done. Okay, let me tell you which one we are missing. We are missing this R16 and also the threaded hole here or the tap hole, the M8 tap hole over here. Okay, let's complete the simpler one and then we will tackle the a bit tougher one. So click on fillet, change the radius to 16. Select the two edges here and here and press OK. Yeah, very quick. Next, I have to create a starting point where the hole will start. So if you see here carefully, okay, this hole will be drilled from the right inwards to the left. Therefore, I will need another work plane created about this diameter 44, tangent to this diameter 44. So that, that work plane, that new work plane will act as where I can place my center point of that hole. Okay, so I will use this vertical work plane that is existing. And I will click this diameter 44 curvature to create a work plane that is tangent to this diameter 44. So click on planes, select this vertical work plane, and then select the curvature. With that, we have this uh, plane work plane that is always tangent to this feature, cylindrical feature, whatever the dimension if we happen to change it next time. Click on this newly created work plane, create sketch, project geometry of the vertical axis, and we will include a center point here. And this hole, okay, the center of this hole or the location of this hole, it's 16 from the base. Finish your sketch, click on hole. This time, under termination, we will click on 2 to the surface here. And we still are using tap holes. Okay, ISO matrix profile with a sizing of 8mm. Again, this time, there's no 2 depth between the tap and the drill hole. So we use full depth and press OK. Okay, always double check when you're creating uh, holes on the curvature that the hole doesn't go through all the way through the solid body. Okay, for this time, it's fine. And let's check our design, make sure that we are not missing out anything. Okay, if I have a counter bar hole, the normal diameter uh, 18 hole, with this five diameter 10 holes, a small cutout at the bottom, at the back, sorry. The matrix M12 hole, yeah, everything looks good. Alright, so uh, happy trying, all the best.